Wakurugenzi in 2012 uh, kuna mama mjamzito akiwa pilka pilka zake maji ka break. Cha kusikitisha ni kwamba ama cha kuogofia ni kwamba ha water broke wakati mimba imebakisha miezi nne. So huyu mtoto alikuwa very yani extremely premature. Lakini Mungu ni nani? Huyu mtoto alizaliwa akawekwa kwa incubator na akakaa. Kitu ambaye sijawaambia ni ya kwamba huyu mama alikuwa amebeba twins. Na wakati maji yake ili break mmoja peke yake ndio alitoka. Akawekwa kwa incubator, huyo mwingine again miraculously akabaki kwa tumbo na aka survive aka survive aka survive until mimba ikafika full term na akaweza kuzaliwa guys between huyu twin wa kwanza kutoka na huyu twin wa pili kutoka kulikuwa na a difference hapa katikati ya 88 days na one day to my birthday on 27th of August 2012 the second twin alizaliwa akajoin ule wa kwanza ambaye sasa alikuwa sha grow kiasi ya kwamba alikuwa ametoka out of danger isn't that beautiful hi ben twende kazi Hitters season I don't know episode 9 Fresh out the kitchen na kama kawa if you see him Krugens in the building you just know he's got the juice mm. Mm. Ah, I'm loving it Eh mko namna gani wadau I hope mambo iko fresh eh squeeze jina yangu mpya ni Kemani yeah hiyo hata sitawaambia uliza tu wale watu walikuja live recording watakwambia where Kemani comes from and I appreciate mkiniita hivyo. Kumbe ni jina ya nguvu ni vile wenye wako nayo hawaipati ile uzito inafaa. Hata sijasikia vibaya. Yeah. Mtaanza kuona vile kimani ni jina ya power now that I am in ownership. <laughs> yes, um bila kupoteza wakati leo nataka tukimbie unyo unyo moja kwa moja mpaka nchi ya Colombia. Wadau mwaka ni 1985 mwezi wa 11 tarehe 13 13th November 1985 13th November 1985 pale Colombia kuna town ndogo sana ambayo iko 169 kilometers from the capital city Bogota town yenyewe inaitwa Amero Amero mvua inanyesha kweli kweli watu wamejifungia kwa nyumba kuna migurumo you know roaring ni kuinje inatoka karibu na mlima kuna volkano iko mahali hapo karibu but mgurumo huu mtu akiwa ndani ya nyumba anaweza assume ni mvua sababu kulikuwa na thunderstorms pale kidogo kidogo so ngurumo za radi kitu ambacho watu hawakuwa wanajua ni kwamba mingurumo hiyo haikuwa ni thunderstorms ilikuwa ni ile volcanic eruption ime erupt pale katika uh, um, uh, mlima inaitwa uh, Nevado uh, del Ruiz Nevado del Ruiz ime erupt magma imetoka imeshuka e, kidogo kidogo imeenda imeshikana na zile ice cap ile ice cap unajua milima pale juu iko na ice eh? na hii magma ikikuja ishikane na ice pale ile ice ina melt wadau ice ambayo iko kwa mlima pale si kidogo iki melt ile maji na shuka pale si mchezo so ile maji imeshuka na kila kitu debris from the volcano eh, vegetation imeshuka imebeba mpaka rocks inakuja speed ya karibu 30 km per hour towards town ya Amero which is less than 50 km away Watu wakiwa kwa nyumba wanasikia sauti sauti wanafikiria ni ngurumo za radi kumbe ni bonge la mudslide in exactly two hours or less 
the small town of Amero was decimated, wiped out. Uh, three quarters of the population gone. Wada wacha ni wapatia backstory ya Hikamambo. Um, one year ago, one year before that, so 1984, eh, scientists na seismologists, wale watu ambao wamesomea mambo ya earthquakes na volcanoes na nini, walikuwa shanza ku pick up activity kwa hiyo volcano ambayo inaitwa eh, eh, Nevado del Ruiz. Na wakaambia serikali, eh hey, bana kuna vitu tuna notice pale kwa hiyo volcano na tuko na feeling hii kitu itakuja ku erupt. Na feel tuanze kukaa rada, tuanze kuchanua wale watu wanaishi hapa karibu ya kwamba anytime hii volcano ita erupt. Na iki erupt ni dangerous. So watu wanafawanze kufikiria plans za evacuation na vitu kama hizo. Lakini serikali ya kuchukulia watu na ile seriousness ina deserve. Sababu gani? Kumbukeni mid 1980s nchi ya Colombia ilikuwa kwa headlines for all the wrong reasons. Number one being the state of uh, drugs and the drug trade ambayo ilikuwa imekumba hiyo inchi. Uh, one of the key leaders wa hiyo area ya Nihadarati ilikuwa mzee mzima um, uh, Pablo Escobar Gaviria alikuwa ametesa mbaya around the same time United States pia walikuwa wamechoka na history ya drugs sababu zile drugs za Pablo zikitoka Colombia zinaenda up huko America President Nixon asikii vizuri sababu population yake wanaumizwa sana na drugs za Colombia so waka sign agreement na Colombia ya kwamba our drug barons wote wa Colombia wanafaa kuwa extradited to the United States waende wafunguliwe mashtaka huko sababu damages zao zina affect kina nani watu wa US so ilikuwa ni ni debate kubwa sana. Of course Pablo Gaviria Escobar being the kingpin, being the drug lord that he was, angechukua hiyo story yote sitting down. Hakuna vile angekubalia ashikwe, aku extradited United States of America afadhali kila mtu akufe. So Pablo alifua, alikuwa anafanya nini? Akaanza akaenda tu on a rampage. Oh stabbings, oh shootings, oh bombings. Kidogo kidogo akakuja akateka mpaka eh, naweza ita nini? Supreme Court yao ameleta mazee milishia wamekuja wame take over hiyo koti kulikuwa mpaka na judges ndani kulikuwa na watu ndani wakakuwa held hostage huko government pia ikaona uja mama ametuzoea sana wakatuma army huko kwa hiyo na the ensuing melee ilikuwa ni chaotic over 70 people died that day kwa hiyo siege ya the supreme court ya, ya Colombia So a lot was happening as the seismologists and the experts hapa chini wanapiga kelele ya oi kuna volcano inaenda ku erupt there please fell on deaf ears sababu kila mtu alikuwa hapa na worry sababu ya nani Pablo Escobar Gaviria na the entire drug cartel ambayo ilikuwa imechukua hiyo country so toka 1984 kuja all through to 1985 by 1985 september the experts were so sure this thing was going to erupt walikuwa shanza kuona mpaka sulfur deposits hapo kwa rim ya hiyo eh, volcano the, the, the volcanic mountain eh, gases sulfur ilikuwa inatoka huko mix na carbon dioxide na hizo zilikuwa ni telltale signs za eh hey, maze kama bora imechemka ni noma eh so again wakarudi kwa serikali wakawaambia ni aje eh hey, wadau mambo pale eh, 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 del ruiz haiko sawa So towards end of 1985 kitu kama mwezi wa tisa, the experts kutoka kwa uh, the um, uh, department of uh, geology and mining walikuwa 100% sure this volcano is going to erupt na wakapiga nduru kabisa kwa serikali in fact wakaenda wakachapisha maps ya kuonyesha the danger zones na vile walikuwa wamechora hiyo map Eh, eh, pale ground zero ilikuwa ni mahali hiyo volcano iko then wakaenda wakidemarcate i think after every 20 kilometers after every 20 kilometers kuna red zone kuna yellow zone na kuna green zone red zone inamaanisha mtu yoyote ako hapo hiyo ni ngori hii volcano iki erupt inakuja imefagia kila mtu hapo hapo ni tunaongea juu ya hot lava hiyo magma na ashes ambazo ni very toxic 
haya yellow zone inamaanisha bado hizo debris zitafika huko kutakuwa na some effects lakini sio as harsh kama hapa kwa red zone then the green zone inamaanisha hiyo debris yote ambayo ni as a result of the volcanic eruption sana sana haitafika kwa hiyo green zone na wale among the towns ambazo zilikuwa pale kwa green zone ni amero so wale watu kidogo walikutana na hiyo map waliangalia wakaona okay sisi kama watu wa amero atuko kwa red zone atuko kwa yellow zone tuko kwa green zone meaning mambo iko tu sawa kitu hawakujua ni kwamba hii map ilikuwa tu inaongea kuhusu the debris that comes out of the volcano some hiyo ni magma hiyo unajua the molten rock na maybe hizo ashes but hawakujua other than that kuna kuaga na vitu hatari sana zinaitwa zinaitwa las oh my god ah ya 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 nimesahau wadao wadao mtu anikulie research very fast niambieni hiyo the volcanic activity ikienda ishikane na the snow cap hiyo maji iki melt hiyo mudslide inaitwa nini there is a scientific name for it niambieni tu watu wangu wa crew what's the name that's given to that mudslide that's as a result of the molten magma mixing with the snow from the cup haya inaitwa lahars eh spell l a h a r s lahars ndio hizo that's the one that's one of the most important i mean uh, dangerous things to come out of a volcano sababu kitu hiyo happen molten magma na, na the ashes zinaenda a certain range na kwa ile map ambayo watu waliona walikuwa wameona red zone na yellow zone ni hard sana hizo vitu zipite yellow zone like hata ni i happening but hizo lahars ni noma sababu hiyo after e volcano ime erupt the magma inaenda in a mix na ile snow ambayo iko kwa kwa peak ya mountain hiyo snow iki melt inakuwa ni maji na ina roll inaenda ikiokota matope inaokota rocks inaokota vegetation na ma- yani ni noma and that thing travels far distances inaweza enda karibu kilomita 90 hata so kumbukeni amero the town iko less than 50 kilometers away from the volcano so hiyo ndio danger how watu wa wako wameona now number one ndio hiyo information imefika wamepata ile map ambayo ime circle hizo zones but hii map inaongea tu juu ya the, the molten magma and the ashes hawajapata eh, kujua other dangers kama hizo lahas zinaweza enda hadi wapi number two hizi map hazijafikia watu vizuri wale watu walizipata ni watu kidogo sana sana in fact kuna mtu i think ni one of the scientists alikam akaongea juu hizo lahas akasema now hizi lahas zikitoka pale juu zitaenda sana so akapiga mapingine ya kuambia wase mali dangerous ziko na amero the town ilikuwa hapo smack in the middle of it so eh, ile order ya evacuation vile ilitolewa eh, wase wangefaa waone lakini hawakukutana na hiyo information and the few people ambao walikutana na hiyo information walirudi kwa serikali kwenda ku find out ni aje tumepata information kuna lahas zitakama hapa kutufanya mbaya ni ukweli tutoke but kumbukeni serikali at that particular time iko na bigger fish to fry wana deal na kina Pablo Escobar hii kitu wanaiona ikiwa ni nonsense sana wanashindwa wait hii volcano haija erupt hapa for almost 100 years ni nini hiyo inafanya mnaona ni kama kuna kitu kubwa ita happen hapa of course kumekoga na activity hapa na pale but hakuna kitu ishai happen so tulieni stay put hakuna haja scientists wanapiga kelele deadly wanaambia serikali maze si tunaangalia jo hizo ma zinaitwa seismographs eh na maze atupendi eh, eh, eh seismic activity hapa ni noma hii kitu ita erupt na itakuwa ni blanda but eh, of course hakuna mtu aliwasikiza until tare 13 November 1985 at exactly saa moja saa mbili jioni yeah saa mbili jioni mvua ilikuwa imeanguka huko mbaya sana which actually ili alleviate your condition your situation sababu hii mvua inanyesha inaongeza ile matope inaongeza hizo mambo ya debris na nina nini siku saa mbili volcano ika erupt magma ndio hiyo imetoka imeenda imeshikana na ile snow 
pale kwa kwa peak ya mountain snow ndio hiyo ime melt maji inamwagika sasa kutoka kwa hiyo volcano ikikuja chini huko chini maz 50 kilometers away amero town ndio hiyo imeenda ikiokota boulders the size of a car like hiyo kitu ilikuwa inapita na kila kitu kwa barabara ikikutana na malori inageuza it was so powerful the very first one ika hit kitu kama saa 5 usiku ikakuja ikafagia town kabisa sababu inakuja iki roll boulders zinatoshana na basketball court ni extremely powerful so the first one ikakuja ikafagia kila mtu hiyo that was quick death like hakuna aso aliona ikikam sababu hiki kitu inakuja na speed ya karibu 30 kilometers per hour na inakuja iki roll hizo maboulders kubwa kubwa na nini so three quarters of the town ikalalishwa in exactly 17 minutes ingine ikakuja sasa lahazi ya pili hii sasa was a bit slower sababu the mud was very heavy ikakuja sasa kupaka sasa le ya mzuri ya matope juu ya hiyo town my friends hii town yote ilikuwa submerged in mud ilikuwa noma sasa hii ya pili zile ileti boulders kubwa kubwa na rocks kubwa kubwa sana inaleta tu rocks tudogo lakini sababu ya kushinda zikizunguka kutoka all the way from where the volcano iko mpaka hapa zinakaa zikishapeniwa sababu rocks zikienda zikigongana hivi inaenda zikishapen zikishapen especially kama ni tudogo tudogo so wale watu walikutana na hii ya pili the second mudslide walikuwa na pata lazarations walikuwa naenda wakikata katwa na rocks ni nini, nini na sababu hii matope inakuja na a lot of impurities na uchafu nyingi na germs wakapata my infections na what not na of course wengi waka drown haya ile ya kwanza ilikuwa ni, ni quick death sababu mazeo umetulia keja yako mawe ya 400 kg zinapita juu yako we mambo yako inaishi hapo hii ya pili mazee ilikuja na dangers tofauti sana while watu wa kwanza walikuwa wanakufa very quick deaths au watu wenye walikuwa wame survive ya kwanza hii ya pili mazee iliwapata design moja tricky sana sababu hii mad kikami kikushika inaku compress design flani unapata eh, external pressure ni deadly kuliko ya ndani so hiyo inaleta ugonjwa flani inaitwa something asphyxia, asphyxiation i forget the first name again my crew niangalilieni hiyo asphyxiation inaitwa nini hiyo so hiyo inafanya blood inaacha ku, ku circulate from the uh, from the heart out inaanza kurudi so hata kwa veins huko kwa shingo mazee blood ina reverse inaanza kurudi tena kwa kwa brain ni noma sana hiyo inafanya jo rib cage yako ina collapse ma vessels zina collapse huko ndani unaanza ku bleed kutoka kwa macho mapua nini it's a very painful way to die so hiyo ndio ilikuwa ya pili and exactly 30 minutes later ya tatu ika come sasa ile ya kufunga kabisa ya kumaliza wadao in less than two hours the small town of amero iliko imepoteza three quarters of its inhabitants a town that has a population of less than 30000 people iliko imepoteza more than 24000 in two hours now the following morning sasa ndio serikali imekama imepata mazee ripoti vile situation ni dire So wamejaribu kutuma ami huko waende waangalie maze ami wanafika huko wanapata matope jo karibu fit 4 fit 3 na nusu unaingia kwa matope inafika hapa kwa west wakikanyaga kwa matope wakijaribu kwenda kuangalia watu huko wanakanyaga tu mili za watu unaweza imagine watu 24000 wame dead place moja it's chaotic ni noma maze so rescue such and rescue missions ilikuwa yani almost impossible walijaribu wale walikuwa naweza kupata na walipata watu wakiwa na injuries mbaya sana crazy lethal but most of the people maze walikuwa napatikana ni watu walikuwa washa washa dead maze so wakiwa hizo pilka pilka za kutafuta bodies nini wakafika place flani kufika hiyo place wanapata kuna rubble kiasi debris eh, concrete concrete nini nini so wakajua hapa kuna hao kuna nyumba ilikuwa hapa lakini sasa iko kwa ground imeanguka so as wanapita hapo mtu mmoja aka discover mkono mkono ya mtoto imeinuka hivi juu kwa debris so akamwambia mwanzake eh naona ni kama kuna mkono pale na ni kama ina move vidole nini nini wacha niende niangalie ni kama huo mtu wako hapo wako alive ama tu ni ali dead ni muscles zinafanya mambo yake 
kufika pale kutoa toa kutoa toa wanapata msichana wa 13 years msichana kwa jina Omaira Sanchez Omaira Sanchez by the end of it all alikaa makakuwa the face of this disaster so now Omaira Sanchez alikuwa anaishi pale nyumbani na baba yake mama yake na aunti yake fulani uh, baba yake alikuwa ameenda kazi i think Bogota na mama yake pia alikuwa na shughuli shughuli fulani wakati hii volcano ilikuwa ina erupt so hawa wawili hawakuwa kwa nyumba yule mtu alikuwa kwa nyumba ni Omaira aunti yake oh na alikuwa na brother yake pia mdogo so wakati mambo ilichacha ile first wave ya laha zimepita hivi brother aka manage kutoka na akakimbia but in the process aka lose kidole anti na Omaira wakabaki hapo kwa nyumba so wakati mambo ili hiyo the, the debris ilikuja ikapita na nyumba kabisa anti yake i think alikuwa anajaribu kum, kum shield or something akashikilia Omaira mguu na akakwama hapo laha zikakuja ikafanya mambo yake landslide ndio hiyo debris kwa keja nyumba yao ikabomoka anti akabaki ameshikilia Omaira mguu ndio hiyo flooding imeanza kabisa so sasa wako submerged kwa matope ma, na maji imefika but since Omaira alikuwa amesimama maji imemfikia hapa eh, kwa shingo anti yake of course amededi sababu alikuwa chini amemshikilia mguu hivi of course hiyo flooding nini aka drown yeye yeah, mambo yake ikaishia hapo so the only thing Omaira Sanchez angefanya ni kuinua mkono juu ndio just in case kuna any rescuers wako hapa wamuone So on the first day vile tu um, uh, hiyo landslide imechapa usiku asubuhi wanapatikana hapo Omaira ameinua mkono watu wa rescue wanakuja wanaanza kutoa debris wanatoa debris wanatoa debris wanashika Omaira wanajaribu kum, kumtoa kwa ile matope but kila time wakimtoa anasikia uchungu maze ndio waka discover wa ile position Omaira yuko amepiga magoti ni kama mtu anaomba alafu vile amepiga magoti slab imemlalia kwa mguu so hawaezi muinua atoke hapo wakimuinua ni uchungu deadly number two, waki, kila time wakitrai kumuinua sijui maji inatoka wapi inaenda tu ikirise wakijaribu kumuinua tena maji ina rise eh hey, wakajiambia hapa tukiendelea na hii tactic hii maji ita rise kabisa na a drown so akaamua kuachana na yeye madaktari wakafika mazee kakuwa sasa hapa ni tujadiliane ame msichana amepiga magoti na kuna slab imemwangukia mguu So the only way ya kumtoa hapa ni kumfanyia amputation uh, chini ya maji wamkate miguu ndio waweze kumtoa. Eh hey, madaktari wakapiga hesabu wakasema uongo mbaya. Mimi nakwambia hii matope ile jams imebeba. Kumbukeni imekuja ime flood ime flood town mzima. So siwa lines nini it was chaotic ni noma. Kumfanyia amputation kwa surrounding kama hiyo ingemuua sasa na bacteria na hiyo inge kwa even more painful. So wakasema hapana wachana na ye, wacha tutafute namna to drain hii maji yote ndio tuweze kungoa hiyo debris uko chini na hizo vitu zimemlalia ndio tumtoe vizuri. So pump ikatumwa kutoka Bogota capital city ikam. So report ikafika Bogota eh ni aje kuna msichana amepatikana 13 years ako na psyche ya maisha mbaya ako very jovial in fact anapiga story na rescuers wanaimba ma singing games hapo anawapigia ma jokes nini eh mazeo msichana lazima tumtoe jo kiteke teke journalists wa shafika hapo kuna mmoja in fact wa Colombia kwa hapo ana mkip company akimpiga ma interview nini nini then the girl is so full of life despite the situation alikuwa in at that particular time So ripoti imefika Bogota ni aje pump weke iweke kwa helicopter teke teke waende wa pump hiyo maji yote watoe ndio waweze ku, kutoa hiyo debris kwa miguu zake wa wa rescue. Pump ikapatikana ikawekwa kwa helicopter ya jeshi right as it was about to take off whether ikaenda to the dogs ikakuwa ni noma maze hiyo pump haiwezi toka. So ripoti ikarudishwa tena eh, Amero eh, msichana ambiwe maze tulia pump ina, imepatikana lakini huko mvua imenyesha deadly hiyo helicopter imeshindwa ku take off lakini wewe eh, piga moyo konde itafika tu in no time msichana akiwa hapo anaambia watu hata wasijali yani she was so hopeful at some point alikuwa mpaka anaambia rescuers mazemu umekana mimi hapa sana msiogope hata kuniwacha muende mpumzike ndio mpate nguvu ya kukam kuniokoa like ni, ni noma in fact kuna excerpts za some of the conversations hapa ben weke tu sekunde kadhaa hiyo conversation ndio waone vile umresha alikuwa gani 
na hope ameweka hope mbele maze. Mama. Si me escuchas. Wadau maze 24 hours zikaisha. E, watu wakiwa hapo na na Omaira e, wanashindwa maze msichana tutamuokoaje. Kidogo kidogo maze before pump ifike. 48 hours zimeisha. Msichana amepiga magoti tuko ile position ako pale but sasa Eh hey, hii mambo imeanza kuteka toll on her. Unaweza tell wanashinda wakimpatia maji hapo, wanampatia chakula hapa na pale. Once in a while anaanza ku crave vitu tamu. I guess hiyo ni energy levels zikienda chini so wanampatia masoda, makeki, nini at least ku kumpatia ile energy. But imeanza kufika point sasa anakanika anaanza ku lose it. Eh hey, anaanza kuambia watu story ya shule anaambia rescuers hapo wa wa wa, wa maze leo nime hata exam yangu ya math saita bidi joni rewind hii hii hi, mwaka yote jo hey, itakuaje jo so hana habari wacha hata exam shule hai exist wale watu wote anasoma nao hawako wameenda she's among the very few people who are still alive a town of 30000 people 24000 gone So wako hapo wanampatia tu hopes wanamwambia usijali usijali mambo itakuwa sawa e, hata pump tumeambiwa iko karibu wacha ikuje tufanye mambo yetu By the time wanaenda kufika the third day Omaira Sanchez alikuwa vibaya so sahi ako very weak e, ana fall in and out of consciousness macho zimekuwa bloodshot zimeacha kukuwa red sasa hizi zimeanza kukuwa almost black vidole sahi maze ziko pale white ako vibaya amekuwa ndani ya maji for almost three days sahi amejaribu kushikilia hope vile anaweza this 13 year old had done everything in her power lakini ilikuwa imefika mahali maze imeanza kuteka toll on her alikuwa anashinda kifolina and out of consciousness akiamka wanampatia maji wanampatia chakula wana try kumuengage wanampigisha story nini nini a journalist akakaa all the way from europe akampiga picha na hiyo picha maze ilienda the whole world in fact hiyo picha ilipatia huyu journalist eh, eh, i think was it a pulitzer prize siko sure but it's one of these prestigious journalism awards in 1986 the following year na after almost 60 hours ndani ya maji eh, sa nne asubuhi tare 16 mwezi wa 11 1985 omaira maze akapoteza hiyo battle eh, alifall to aliingia tu into ali, ali, unconscious na hii time maze hakuweza kukuwa revived so after me daddy ile pump wakai wakai seti ka pump ka pump ka pump then wakaweza kutoa hiyo debris ile kwa imemshikilia ime kutoa hiyo debris wana discover anti yake pia alikuwa anachangia alikuwa amemshikilia design moja tight na akadedi ya kio hivyo so that's why eh, wakitrai kumtoa ilikuwa ni ngumu kutoka juu debris imemlalia na anti yake uko chini ame clutch kwa miguu zake so Umaira katolewa hapo akaenda akazikwa na picha yake mazee kafanya Umaira Sanchez at age 13 was the face of the Amero disaster of 1985 such a painful story maze especially after watu wa America pio ngori yote waka discover Amero ange need ku daddy like wase gava ingechukulia hiki tu seriously vile na ile seriousness ilikuwa ina deserve wase wengi sana wange survive watu walikuwa sha predict hiyo volcano ita erupt more than one year ago na wakaambia serikali but serikali wakapuuza sababu they were dealing with other issues eh, less than two months to the eruption Awa so alipiga kelele the seismologist walipiga noise sorry wakasema maze evacuate ni awa se evacuate ni awa se na watu by the way wale kadhaa walipata hiyo information wakasikia wakaanza kutoka as wanatoka serikali ikakaa ikasema hapana you guys mna overreact hakuna kitu ngori so wale watu walikuwa shanza kutoka wakarudi sababu serikali imesema hakuna noma waka maintain red cross yani kwa ile attempt ya scientists kuprovia serikali maze wakaita red cross an international community waka show kila kitu stats zote nini kila kitu wakawaambia hii information tumepata nini nini mnaonaje hawa se wabaki ama tu evacuate red cross wakaona hiyo information wakasema yo hii kitu ina erupt hawa tu watoke 
Red Cross wakaambia mpaka serikali eh hey, mazee sikizeni experts wenu tume go through your data na ina show mazee 100% chance hiyo volcano ina erupt ambieni watu wenyu waende but again government haikusikiza hata Red Cross and 13th of November 1985 24000 people wakapoteza maisha yao That's the sad reality man yeah but um, inasemekana after your disaster uh, gava waliji chuna maskio na sasa hii at least wanajaribu ku respond a bit more efficiently eh mazendio at least kusikwe na repeat ya disaster kama hiyo which i think goes down in history as one of the worst disasters to ever hit colombia hiyo ni noma 24000 people kwenda in two hours eh hiyo it, it's 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 astronomical noma sana man Yep, na hapo ndo tunafunga story. Uh, uh, may Omaira Sanchez rest in peace. Maze alienda kifo moja iko pretty hata kidogo. Yeah, maze mat uh, mambo ya dunia hiyo. Asante ni guys, zimekuwa true sana ikikubamba. Ambia mbogi bana tukue wengi jo, tufurahie si wote au sio. Imekuwa true sana na watambua deadly. Adios muchachos. Peace.